tell them you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. Three deliveries, three pregnancies, no life lost. Mothers and children came out. You deserve the thanks. You deserve the worship. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for your keeping power. We bless your name. For the many deliveries that have happened even up till this week. And you are still preserving us. Be glorified. I ask that you speak to us today. And let your word make us good. Change our lives. Bless our homes in Jesus mighty name. Can I hear a louder amen? Give the Lord a big hand as you take your seat. Praise God. In this church if you are not careful as you are sitting down on that chair you get pregnant. Just the chair alone, you will get better. Uh, this thing is flowing too much. Uh, this week that passed, someone delivered in the hospital. Uh, she started having 
She didn't know. She, she, this is her second child. Oh. She was having small, small contraction. She said, let her go to hospital in the evening. She went the one hour she delivered. Because they didn't even believe she would deliver that soon. And the other one, before they could rush, she delivered in the house. Husband was mid-husband. The husband was the one that caught <laughs> It's not midwife, it's mid-husband. We owe God a lot of thanks for all these blessings. Please go ahead and appreciate him one more time. Amen. It means there's fruitfulness grace in this house. Hallelujah. I had to tell them, I said, just carry the child to hospital. Let them just check the way you bond the thing for us. I'm not sure your hand was clean. Take the child to the hospital. <laughs> Let them just check the child. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to welcome all our guests. God bless you. I recognize you uh, when we start the dedication. Let me just talk very briefly. This is our month of, of God's wisdom. Somebody say God's wisdom. And it's uh, to this Sunday, first Sunday, is our family and friends Sunday. I usually talk about marriage. So today, this is the fourth message, fourth service. I've been talking about building your home or your marriage with God's wisdom. Building your marriage with God's wisdom uh, was the first message. The second was apply for wisdom. The third was God's wisdom for your welfare. And in this service, I'm talking about God's wisdom for marital peace. Please help us with the children. God's wisdom for what? Marital peace. Marital peace. Marital peace. God's wisdom for marital peace. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10. Only by pride commit contention. But with the well advised is wisdom. Amen. Give it to us in um, NLT. New Living Translation. New Living Translation. New Living Translation. This person, you want us to close late? Huh? Okay. Only by pride comes contention. Look at what the New Living Translation says. Pride leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. Pride will lead to conflict every time. But those who take advice are wise. Amplify. Amplify. By pride and insolence that usoyen comes only contention. But with the well advice is skillful and godly wisdom. Someone say, Lord, give me wisdom. Let's read good news. I want to read as many translations as possible. Arrogance causes nothing but trouble. <laughs> Arrogance causes nothing but what? Trouble. It is wiser to ask for advice. It's wiser to do what? Ask for advice. Give us NIV. New International Version. Pride only breeds quarrels. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Give us Bible in basic English. BBE. The only effect of pride is fighting. <laughs> but wisdom is with the quiet in spirit. Message Bible. Arrogance. That is know it all. Arrogant know it all. Stir up discord. But wise men and women listen to each other's counsel. That's wise husbands and wives listen to their counsel. May the Lord bless the reading of his many words from many translations in Jesus' name. <laughs> so I cannot begin to explain to you how important and very highly crucial peace is in marriage. Someone say peace. Let there be peace. Jesus said, when you enter a house, Declare peace because most houses don't have peace. Too much contention. If there is any place where peace must be priced very highly is marriage. Anywhere you want to price peace highly is marriage. Marriage is not possible or workable where there is no peace. 
Marriage without peace is hell on earth. Rewind. Marriage without peace is what? Hell on earth. You, uh, you didn't have peace in your marriage. You die as you pass on. More hell waiting for you there. Hell on earth. He, you, no peace at work is not a problem. No peace uh, in, in your neighbor is not a problem. But no peace in your marriage. Abba. Sha, da, 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 da. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Marriage without peace is the worst nightmare that can happen to anybody alive. The worst that can happen to anybody. The problem is what makes a marriage slip into a state of peacelessness and restlessness? What happens? What are the kind of things that provoke and promote lack of peace? God is saying very clearly that pride is the highest suspect. What did I say? Pride is the primary suspect. So people will tell you, I'm not proud. Oh. I'm not proud. Oh. You are not proud till we marry. You, till, till you marry. You are not proud till there is contention. Then we see your behavior in that contention. That's when your pride is revealed. Or that your, your lack of, or the fact that you don't have pride is confirmed. Hallelujah. So I said it's a very brief service. Sharp, sharp. I'll soon finish. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So wherever you see strife, wherever you see contention, you may want to quickly question pride. Pride is, the, is at the root of the cause or the root cause and pride is what is also sustaining it. When a quarrel or a problem is not going, suspect pride. Quiet, what did I say? Suspect pride for what? Yeah, some of you are getting carried away. That's why I ask you a question. Praise the Lord. Don't sing and not receive singing to yourself. There must be pride somewhere that is always responsible for strife and contention. Anywhere. Always pride. Why do nations fight? Pride. I can't take it. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. The person is shouting, let's go to war. He's not the one that will fight. Though. It's people's children. Let's go to war. And youth can be very stupid. Youth, are you with me? Yeah, are you with me? Yeah. Your mother is saying, I will go. I love my nation. You are stupid. Come back. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Receive grace today to drop your pride. How do you know pride is on ground? And that's how I'm ending. Now how do you know pride is on ground where there is a problem? Number one, in case you don't know whether there is pride, I will give you symptoms of the presence of pride. One, when no one admits their fault. No one is admitting their fault. Not me, not me. No, no, no. I am right, I'm wrong. No, no, no. I'm not wrong. You are the one that is wrong. No, I'm right. You are the one. Hey, when no one is admitting fault, for every family problem, blames are shared. It is hardly 100% one person's fault. Sometimes 10% at least is from the other side. Number two, when apologies are scarce in the house, proud people don't apologize. That's one way to know them. You don't need any revelation, you don't need vision. Proud people cannot say sorry. Sorry is poison in their mouth. Are you hearing me? Uh, the best thing I'm not proud. But come on, I am sorry. Three word medicine. I am sorry. It, it cannot come out of your mouth. Pride has killed you. It's a barrier that is remaining. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Especially we men. All men say amen. amen. You know we have a, our pride is, is level. Women don't have pride. Their pride is junior student. Yeah. Women, our pride. <laughs> Number three. If as I'm seeking this thing, I'm shaking your table. Leave the table, let it break. God will give you another one. Number three. When couples play tit for tat. 
You do me, I do you. Vengeful spirits. I asked you for money, you refused to give me. Near me this night, my was in your wood. <laughs> I'll kill you. If you touch me this night, I'll kill you. You say you kill me? You won't do I'll go and touch prostitute. No! Go and touch prostitute. Go and punish you there. One woman said, This one you are going to meet women. Miami, they will bring you back with HIV. Believe me, they brought the man with HIV. She told me. I prayed for the man. God healed the man of HIV. But she told me that, Pastor, I am the one that said they will bring you HIV one day. After the HIV was healed, another matter came up. That one could not be healed. Maybe the man did not learn sense. You know some people you heal from here, they put like here, heal them here, they put their leg. They can never be free. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Number. What was number three? The plated for that is every mistake is paid back in full. In full. If you take two weeks, is it please forgive me? Remain one week. I must finish my payback. Let's go to number four. When forgiveness is hard to offer, your pride is on ground. Pride is on ground. Why won't you forgive somebody? It's not because the pain is too painful. It's pride. Finish. It takes humility to forgive. It's pride. I forgive you. You see what you do to me. The man who refused to eat food. Just because to eat the food will mean he has forgiven her. So he won't eat food. Men, such a wisdom is not of God. It doesn't make sense. It's your house. It's your wife. It's your food. Then you get angry. You will not eat. As how? Me, I used to eat. Oh. You need food to have strength to be angry. <laughs> if not, I ask a call. I told myself, I will eat food. I never see my father one day angry and say he's not eating food. My father doesn't have time. He will eat his food and continue his anger. Praise the Lord. Now he's asked my food though. What do you mean? Eh? That's cheating. I'm the offended one and then I'm the, deep, I'm the hungry one again on top. Men, sorry for yourself. Eat food. You'll be strong. For more anger. <laughs> because as you eat the food, there is a healing that is taking place. You know that. And Satan doesn't want you to eat that food. Because you know, when your wife has made you angry and she wants to she tell you sorry, she, the way she will summer the food and add mega mega, that is additions that are even not necessary. You will now look at it and say, it's all this. All this one is just to bribe me. <laughs> The navel sweet. <laughs> ah, oh my God. May God deliver us all. Yeah. Is your husband become a little boy again? See, see, this is not even sweet. Seth. Wife, when you offer such food, don't hang around. Go. If you are there, he will do shakara. As soon as you move out, he will eat the thing. So she can cook like this. And she... <laughs> And she will not cook. But she will be suffering me all this place. I will continue my vexation. Mm. I eat the food. <laughs> praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Offer forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgiveness again. When it's not given on time. It's not given how? On time. Jesus said forgive 70 times 7 a day. When the disciples help, they say, Lord, increase our faith. Because who, who, how do you forgive like that? The truth is, forgiveness takes faith. You need faith to forgive. Number what? Number what? Oh? So you are not following. Number five. When wrongdoings of the past are constantly repeated, that is, Either husband or wife have become accuser of the brethren. 
see you are doing again that's how you went the other day that's how you went the other day that thing i told me seven years ago and nothing happened this is how you do every time you do that's how you do the other day it's not eight years ago constantly repeating the past that is you are not just proud you are a slave master you want to enslave your spouse to that wrongdoing for life when will you let it go why are you always speaking on the past let me tell you something whatever makes you repeat the past of your spouse all the time is a satanic spirit is a devilish spirit the bible calls the devil in revelation chapter 12 the accuser of the brethren that is when you are a constant accuser you are is that word accuser means devil diabolos diabolos that is diabolos is the greek word for diabolic that is you are devilish the word accuser is diabolos is a prosecuting lawyer that you are constantly prosecuting diabolos is diabolic demonic leave the past forgive your wife or your husband let it go forget it the way god forgets your own the bible says he will cast your sins into the sea of his what forgetfulness praise the name of the lord how do you know there is pride finally when every mistake gets you really angry small thing happen you will vex you will vex you will break the television or those who don't break tv they will talk they will talk they will open mouth say things unprintable things for one little mistake or one big mistake as the case may be can i tell you the hallmark of maturity when you can see a wrongdoing and do what leave it it's not everything you must point out see there are things your spouse does sometimes ignore it what did i say ignore it you don't have to mention every you kill somebody don't mention everything what is this what is that your spouse wear clothes come and draw your skirt why is the skirt high they say why are you this uh, abba till high blood pressure will begin cameraman why are you distracting me respect yourself praise the name of the lord am i making sense here today can't be mentioning everything that goes wrong my father was a very wonderful perfectionist what did i call him perfectionist i didn't understand the study of temperaments then if i knew i would have understood and my father better in the study of temperaments i know now my father was a melancholic person that is eh? my father was neat neater neatest as in clean cleaner as in our house all of our house is house we had a, a a duplex of four bedrooms yeah for 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 so all our rooms are normal rooms my father's room is hotel you know what i'm talking about the girls room the boys room the guest room they are normal house room my father's room hotel is bed you can't see one line for what the bed is like that when you see it sleep will catch you the bed is blessed you enter his room as the lord leave it no sand on the floor and the way he arranges his cupboard if one thing move he will know my father I wish he was alive now so that I will tell him I know you now. I know you who you are. Eh? His toilet. You can eat food there and be blessed. Oh, toilet is clean, cleaner, cleanness, cleanliness. So there are times, there are times he goes to work. I will just go to that room and say, see room. I will lie down on the bed just to feel important but before you lie know how it was <laughs> if not the anang man will say Adapa. 
<laughs> you die. I look at the bed, I will lie down and say, Chai! Papa, they enjoy you. Then I will enter the toilet. It's so clean. You will feel edified. You know that toilet where you stay, you, you, you hear from God. I will sit there and poo poo. Just to prove points. Then my father, if he catch one paper on the ground, oh, oh, oh. He went to work since 8, 7.30. Came back and saw paper on the ground. You are finished. So we the children, we became experts. You know those fathers that when they land, you take off. <laughs> Don't hang around. My father was like, it was not his intention. No. My father love us. Love us. My father is not, some fathers are so careless. When you do bad, they'll tell you, I disown you. My father, disown who? If you like, he will beat you box you you are still my son my father doesn't have that kind of time but he didn't know how to control that side of him and so he will come back so when we hear his horn first when my father gets any new car we study the horn blam pim blam again pim blam pim recorded <laughs> recorded into our medulla oblongata and so we will play scatter the whole parlor play 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 as soon as we hear pim ladies and gentlemen <laughs> cushion enter pa stool pa center table pa this one pa 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 bam we, we survey for the last time we have slept not that we are trying to sleep we have slept <laughs> ah what are you talking about? Is that people sleeping? For you to answer means you are trying to sleep. <laughs> Guess what? You know, all the house helps we get, we treat the house help like our sister. So we had one house help. We were playing, she too was playing. My mother warned her, this thing you are following these children. When their father comes, you will see something. Till we heard the horn, she didn't know. <laughs> what, she, <laughs> what she just knew was that everybody was diving, arranging the parlor, and we took off siesta. She stood in the middle, my father caught her. Why is this paper here? Why is it? My, father, my, my mom said, I told you. We have slept. <laughs> Having learned from my father, I've learned not to be like that. That spirit nearly caught me. We come back and see something, just that I, I don't want to do, so I will hold it in my mind. I'll be very angry. But wherever there are children, things must be dirty. Or they were very normal. Because if there are no children, the house will be so clean. You yourself will say, this house can't it be dirty. So make allowance in your heart. Don't expect everything to be perfect. Where you have too much high expectations, your heart will be constantly grieved. Because many of those expectations, people around you will not be able to meet them. you just be getting angry anyhow. Pastor David Biome said, he doesn't like the wall to be dirty. So, he will write on the wall, please don't touch the wall. But even when he write, don't touch the wall, people will touch the, don't touch the wall. <laughs> so he said the thing used to make him angry all the time. So one day the Holy Ghost told him, why are you getting angry? Can't you buy paint from time to time and paint the wall? Say, let people touch the wall. He said, okay. So now people touch the wall, he doesn't get. Before they thought, he said, remove your hand from the wall. Remove your hand. Wall is meant to be touched. Is that what I'm saying? Talk less of when they are children. They won't just touch the wall. Mommy, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord help you with pride. 
May the Lord take away your pride. Make your life simple. So you don't kill yourself. Eh? Even when you know you are wrong because of the pride, you don't want to say sorry. When the thing be, when they now know you are very, very wrong, you go and buy you go and buy gift. Gift is not the same as I am sorry. Or especially us men, you know how to tell your wife, How are you? Are you fine? Is that I am sorry? I am sorry is a miracle word. It's a miracle phrase. He can heal the sick, open the blind eyes, raise the dead. Just I am sorry. Let me round up by saying this. A house, a home, a marriage where certain phrases are absent is a sick marriage. As a matter of fact, those two people, the husband and wife, they are sick. Number one, thank you. There is no thank you in the house. There is too much pride there. No appreciation. Whatever you don't appreciate, we depreciate. Two, I love you. Especially us men, we don't know how to say I love you. Wife will tell you I love you. Say, mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's not the answer of I love you. <laughs> Everybody, what's the answer of I love you? I'm saying it because when I was cutting my wife, she would tell you I love you. I would say thank you. Very nonsense. You know, I, my father was a military man. That Barak, Barak and Ajegule spirit. What is thank you? I love you answer is not thank you. It is what? The worst are people from the village. Villagers, even though they are wearing suits. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is what? Good money, you can't say. Mon. What is mon? Are you, mon? are you cursing me? Finally, the phrase that must not be missing is what? I am sorry. It should, be, it should flow in your mouth. It should be normal in your mouth. And you should mean it. I am sorry. I hope it is a few points of mine. Succeeded to convince you. God's wisdom for marital peace. Deal with pride. And peace will be permanent. Deal with pride. And you will live longer. High blood pressure. Hypertension. All of them related with pride many times. You go to a doctor. He said, doctor, my blood pressure is going up. Doctor said, how did you know? Nurse, come and check. They check. And your blood pressure is going up. Doctor said, ah, ah, what is the matter? Are you something worrying you? Is madam disturbing you? He said, so why are you asking? Because we don't know the cause of this blood pressure. This blood pressure is, is, is called idiopathic hypertension. Idiopathic. It is hypertension that has no known cause. You know, I'm a doctor by proxy. Just that I didn't attend classes. It's called idiopathic. So the full meaning is idiotic and pathetic. <laughs> idiotic and pathetic hypertension. May you not have that kind of hypertension. Live life simple and you will live long. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Go ahead and appreciate God. Thank you. I pray for you. Pray for me. I, I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. With words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to will pardon and cleanse with grace grace God's grace grace that will greater than all my sins sing it again 
If we neglect so great a salvation God gave you grace and you turned it away I want to pray for somebody here today God's grace is calling on you the Bible says in Titus 2 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men you are here today and you don't have a relationship with God I'm not talking about going to church I'm talking about having a personal relationship with God you talk to him and he talks to you 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 there's peace in your heart you know if you die you will make it to heaven you will be where he is you're not afraid to die I want to pray for somebody today who is a backslider you like God to restore you you don't like the way your life is you like God to come to your help I want to pray for someone today you are asking God I need a better life my li I don't like the way my life is I want my life better wherever you are I want to pray for you right now whatever category you belong quickly you belong to any of the category I just mentioned please pray this prayer with me from your heart say Lord Jesus with all my heart 
I repent of my sin. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking my place on the cross. I accept your sacrifice for me. And I receive you into my life today as my Lord and personal Savior. I vow from today that I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for serving, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God.